Welcome to your second module on the water management course. In this module we'll be discussing chapter 9 which is on changing coasts. This is your lecturer Nathan Bowden. In this module you will learn the major coastal processes including waves, currents, tides, and sea level change and how they work the characteristics of the most common types of landforms along coastlines, including beaches, estuaries, bays, and headlands, what causes coastal erosion, how it happens, and what change it creates, what causes coastal sedimentation, how it happens, and what change it creates, the role of storms in changing coastlines, how people attempt to respond to changes caused by flooding, erosion, and sedimentation along coasts. In this picture you see a typical coastline with some of the features that I just uh, mentioned. A few coastal basics, including uh, the measuring of waves. This is uh, the wave height, uh, the distance between the crest and the trough, the crest being the peak and the trough being the lowest point. The wave length, which is the distance be between the same point on a wave. The period, which is how often a wave passes a certain point. And the velocity, how quickly a wave travels. The size of waves generated on the open water depends on wind strength. Duration of wind blowing in a cons consistent direction over wave surface. And the distance over which the wind blows which is more commonly referred to as the fetch. Here we have a diagram of a wave. Um, as you see at the top, the wavelength, that's the distance between two of the same points. In this case, a uh, distance between two crests. The crest being the highest point of the wave, the trough the lowest point. The distance, um, the height of a, of a wave, is the distance between the crest and the trough. Uh, wave movement um, is the movement of the wave itself, not of the individual water particles. Um, and deep water, the motion of the water particle is um, circular, uh, and these are larger circles at the surface and smaller uh, as you go deeper into the sea. As a wave approaches shallow water, uh, you see the movement going from left to right up onto the beach. First it's in deep water, then approaching shore, which is also called the near beach zone, and the surf zone. The, uh, the, the path that the part interval particles travel in the deep water, as I mentioned, was circular, but as you approach the beach, these circles become flatter uh, ellipses. At a certain time, the wave becomes too steep to support itself, and it breaks, and that is the surf zone. Waves, as they approach the shore, can approach um, parallel or perpendicular. Um, if it is parallel, then this will slow part of the wave and uh, the, the, it slows the part of the wave that enters the shallow wave, shallow water first. And this focuses the energy onto uh, what could be a, um, a headland, which is a peninsula of land jutting into the ocean, um, resulting into an island, which you see on the right. Nearshore currents include longshore drift, which is the movement of sediment uh, by longshore currents in which the wave washes onto the beach, it carries the sediment back up the shore, um, and uh, also beach drift, which is the amount, which is the sediment that moves along the shore, which you'll see in the next slide. Rip currents are the currents going in and out of the beach, which can, which can include the uprush, which is the flow of water uh, onto the beach, and the backwash the flow of water towards the ocean. And here you see longshore drift in this figure. Um, so as the waves approach the shore obliquely, um, it, it pushes the sand up and 
and then back in a zigzag fashion, fashion which transports the sediment along the coast. Tides. Tides are sea level fluctuations between two high and two low tides each day, which are caused by gravitational interactions among the Earth, Moon, and Sun, but more specifically between the Earth and the Moon, which has more of an influence on the waves than the Sun. The tidal range is the amount of rise and fall during a tidal cycle. This varies from day to day. Um, two times in a lunar month, this uh, tidal ranges are at the greatest. It's called a spring tide. And neap tides, which is when it's at the lowest. This is also influenced by the shape of the coast and the seafloor. Coastal currents, or tides, flow through restricted channels. Um, tidal currents uh, will erode the seafloor and transport sediment. And these two figures, you see the effect that the sun and the moon have on a on on waves. Both uh, the spring tide happens twice a month. These are uh, during the full and the new moon. And neap tides are when the moon pulls in the opposite direction uh, from the sun. And in this case, it's neap. Neap tide. Sea level change. There's global sea level change, uh, which can be has been varied a little throughout the Earth's history, and it's due to variations in the amount of sun's radiation that the Earth receives. This can be caused by changes in Earth's orbit around the sun, and also the transfer of water between oceans and pol polar ice accumulations. Recently. In the past 100 years, the oceans have ri risen 15 centimeters. But there are also local changes in sea levels, um, which can be caused by the movement of the geosphere. That's the tectonic plates underneath the ocean. These can move up or down. They can be gradual uh, through loading and unloading of weight on the geosphere's crust, or quite fast. Uh, which uh, which is also common of plate tectonic movements, um, influence such as uh, tsunamis. Sea level during the last glaciation, uh, approximately 20,000 years ago, uh, was the last um, gl global glacial period. Uh, at this time, shorelines were approximately 110 to 125 meters lower than they are today, and much of the Gulf uh, of Mexico and the Atlantic continental shelves were exposed, as well as um, the, the land bridge between North America and Northeast Asia, nearing the Bering Strait, where the Bering Strait is now. Uh, if you look to deeper waters uh, from the shore, from the coasts, uh, the continental margin is the amount, is the underwater uh, land on the continental crust before the oceanic crusts, which are where is where two tectonic plates meet. It begins on the closest towards the beach on a continental shelf, which uh, is very gradual, uh, very gradual change in depth. At what on one point there will be a shelf break, quite far off into uh, into uh, off of the beach, which will. Uh, run into a continental slope, which is a steep decline in the depth of the um, continental margin, and then finally into the continental rise, where the continental crust meets the oceanic crust, and the change in depth is less pronounced. An example of an estuary, which is formed from rising sea levels, is the Chesapeake Bay. The Chesapeake Bay, uh, 20,000 years ago, was just a river, but as the uh, glacial uh, gla glaciers uh, melted and the water went into the oceans, which raised the sea levels, much of this uh, river valley was uh, was flooded, so, uh, specifically the Susquehanna River Valley, and this is now called the Chesapeake Bay, which is in between Maryland and Virginia near Washington DC. Erosional features and sea level rises on coasts uh, create such things as um, 
on the left hand side uh, erosions in the Oregon coast which include sea arches you see in the middle of the picture also see stacks headlands and pocket beaches and other things such as estuaries here's another example of an estuary a photo of the uh, Pacific estuary as I mentioned before um, large parts of the oceans are not very deep and were exposed and in, in past glaciations and in this picture you see the depth of the continental shelf between Alaska uh, and North America and Russia and Northeast Asia this is now covered in water as the Bering uh, Street, Strait or the Bering Sea but uh, much of this is less than 100 meters deep and as I mentioned the last glaciation the l levels of sea were approximately 110 to 130 meters lower which means that large parts of this continental shelf were exposed. A closer look at beaches. Uh, beaches uh, as definition are accumulations of loose waterborne material which uh, generally are sand and pebbles uh, uh, often accompanied by mud, rocks and shells which are deposited on the edge of a body of water typically a gently sloping shore washed by waves or tides. The influences of the atmosphere, such as wind, the hydrosphere, waves, and geosphere, the shoreline and the plates underneath them, come together at the beach. A few things that you should learn about beach anatomy, which are shown on the next slide, are um, sea cliff, bluff, or dune, which are normally um, behind a beach on the land side, berms, which are, are on the beach, the beach face, which is where the sea meets uh, the beach and the sand. The near shore zone, as I mentioned several sheets uh, ago, is the, the zone closest to the beach. And the surf zone, which is where the waves crash. They break. And lastly, a longshore bar, which is uh, quite often an underwater bar in the water. As I, as I said, this figure shows uh, so these parts. On the far right is a dune, also you see a cliff above that. On the beach itself there are berms which uh, can be formed by uh, various high tides. So the, um, the higher berm will be created at a uh, spring tide and a lower berm can be created at a neap tide, a lower tide. The beach face is where the waves meet the beach. The surf zone is where the beaches, where the uh, waves break. Uh, and then the longshore bar is an underwater uh, a land strip, which quite often is where the, the waves begin to break. And this entire area is called the near shore zone. A close look at beaches. The beaches themselves are quite often uh, made by quartz, seashells, or coral in tropical areas, um, and eroded and weathered volcanic rock, uh, no most notably in Hawaii and on the island of La Palma in the, in the Canary Islands, off the coast of western coast of Africa. And sediment supply, uh, these are called littoral cells, which is a self-contained system where uh, the sand will exit or enter. Uh, if it enters, it's called a credit, such as uh, rivers, as we saw in the previous module, or through longshore drift. A debit is the uh, taking away of sand, which can quite often happen through uh, storms, through the wind, and ocean currents. When the debits are greater than the credits, then you have erosion, and when the credits are greater than deb debits, you have growth, beach growth. Here is one example of a littoral cell. Uh, in this case, it's Santa Monica. Uh, and Santa Monica, and specifically in the city of near Santa Monica is Los Angeles, the sand enters the littoral cell uh, from the north uh, near Malibu in this case it comes from uh, longshore drift but also through the rivers coming down through the islands north of Malibu and then along the coast of Los Angeles called Santa Monica and then it uh, exits 
through a deep water canyon, a submarine canyon, called Redondo Submarine Canyon, which is quite deep. Coasts and storms, most notably we have hurricanes and typhoons, depending on where you are and on the planet, uh, hurricanes happening on the Atlantic, and typhoons in the Indian Pacific Ocean. Hurricanes are vast rotating storms, um, some which are more than 500 kilometers across. It's, uh, these inten intensify by drawing energy and moisture from the warm surface water of the tropics. Tropical depressions uh, are storms with winds of less than 62 kilometers per hour. Tropical storms are above 62 kilometers an hour. A hurricane is sustained winds which can reach up to 118 kilometers per hour on the outside of the, the, the wall of the hurricane or typhoon is a, a thunderstorm uh, surrounding the low pressure center of the storm this center is called the eye where the area is warm calm um, and a small area in the center of the storm here you see a cross section of a hurricane or a typhoon again the spiraling winds of the thunderstorms around the eye these winds carry uh, carry moisture up into the air where it cools and then uh, and then descends uh, as rain on the and rain bands on the outside leaving the center calm and on the upper right you see a view of uh, hurricane or typhoon from above. Hurricanes and typhoons uh, can be classified on the Saffir Simpson scale. Uh, there are five categories uh, ranging from the, the speed of the winds, uh, and you can use this as a reference in the future. Uh, these uh, rankings are based on central pressure within the eye of the storm, maximum sustained winds, and potential for a dangerously high storm surge, which is the amount of water that uh, is raised when it reaches, reaches beaches, reaches, reaches shore. Uh, we combat uh, storms through hard stabilization. These hard stabilizations include seawalls, which are massive structures that uh, will hopefully withstand the full force of storm waves. But this is not necessarily the case. Bulkheads, which are smaller vertical walls of timber, concrete, or steel, often placed by a berm and then backfilled because the berm is already a natural uh, bulkhead. Revetments, which are lighter duty structures, uh, which just are a protective covering of embankments or beaches and protect against erosion from nearshore currents lightweight activity not necessarily used for uh, typhoons or hurricanes it may increase the erosion of the beach front fronting the seawall breakwaters are barriers built parallel to the coast in the water which will cause the braves the waves to break offshore instead of onshore this uh, will stop the energy of the wave and the the waves when they come to shore do not cause as much erosion or damage. It, call, it provides a calm area behind this breakwater as sort of artificial harbor or port. Our other techniques include groins, which are barriers built perpendicular to shore. You'll see this in the next, uh, it's, an odd, it's where you haven't seen often. These uh, are shown in the next uh, slide. They capture sand uh, from longshore drift, trying to keep the sand in the place where they are so it uh, thwarts erosion in order to rebuild the beach. They create a positive sediment budget that means more sand is coming in than leaving and these are built commonly in groups often from stone blocks, concrete, sheet steel or timber. Jetties are uh, built also perpendicular to shore and these are uh, built to stabilize inlets uh, or when filling in with sediment. They can be constructed on the up drift side of the inlet and uh, can also be on the down drift side. Issue, however, is that sediment accumulates on the up drift side of the barrier and erodes the down drift side, which is a 
redistribution of sediments. Here uh, you see on the left a bulkhead in Boston or a revetment in Toronto. On the left uh, you see a groin uh, and on the right the beaches that they ca cause. This is a typical uh, zigzagging uh, sawtooth pattern. Soft stabilization are other techniques to use, uh, such as beach nourishment, bringing in uh, new sand to keep the rate of erosion down from periodic storm damage. Dune restoration. Uh, dunes uh, offer, uh, in general, uh, protection from storms and high water, so these dunes will be restored. Management practices. Uh, you can manage the sediment by dredging, which is taking sediments from the bottom of the ocean, most often, or from rivers, and putting them back onto beaches. And if there is sediment contamination, uh, the sediment can be can be dredged. Uh, if it has been contaminated with pollutants, uh, this is very difficult to remediate, and the sediment is often very difficult to uh, recover carefully, because it will. Um, re-enter the hydrosphere, the water column, if you if you interrupt this uh, sediment. It goes back into the water, which is what you want to avoid in the first place. And mitigating coastal storm hazards. So in other words, um, strict building codes uh, to uh, reduce the structural damage to beaches. Uh, and for example, using different types of nails, metal straps, and of course coastal zone management deciding who can build where. In summary we, we have learned in this, in this second um, part of this module winds um, move surface and near surface water to create waves and swells that transfer energy through the hydrosphere. Waves may vary in size and described by their height, wavelength and period. As waves enter shallow water Friction with the bottom causes the wave's height to increase and its wave length to decrease, which uh, in, in turn refracts and become more parallel to the shoreline. Longshore drift develops where waves are oblique to the shoreline and move water and sediment along it. Tides are caused by gravitational interactions of Earth, Moon, and Sun. Global climate fluctuations can cause changes in sea level. Movements of the geosphere affect many coastlines, so this includes tectonic movements along the plate bound boundaries. The physical features along coasts vary depending on tectonic setting, but also local geology and geography, as well as sediment supply. Beaches have distinctive parts. The littoral zone is where sediment is in motion along shores. Erosion occurs where there is a negative sediment budget. Sediment is deposited where there is a positive sediment budget and where wave and current energy is diminished. Coastal storms, including hurricanes, have major effects on coasts. Physical features people construct to control coastal processes have had mixed results. Soft stabilization techniques can help, but over the long term, coastal processes are not very controllable. And lastly, respecting coastal processes and the value of natural coastal resources, such as habitat and ecosystems, will be part of what people do to achieve a sustainable future.